What's up, Packer fans? Coach Hawn here with you in the film room on behalf of Packernet.com. Fully aware that I'm about to become the second least popular man in all of Packer Nation for what I'm about to show you here. Second, of course, only to Mike Pettin. Uh, what I'm hoping to show you here, so yesterday during the game and then right after the game, um, I was a little bit fired up by seeing a lot of the fire petting type of talk and whatever, and that's fine. Like, you obviously, you're all allowed to your opinion. That's what makes this America, not Soviet Russia or anything like that. So I get it. Um, but I do want to at least maybe show you how some of the things um, that are being said about petting might just be inaccurate. At some point in time, um, what I'm starting to see here is the scheme itself seems good. The seam itself is gap sound. It looks good. Um, at some point in time, you have to put the OS on some of the players to make plays when they are freed up in this scheme, just like on offense. When you have uh, St. Brown dropping a couple of, of great throws in a row, um, you don't see everybody coming after the OC. Like it, it, he put the player in the position to make plays and the player just didn't miss plays or didn't make plays, excuse me. So I feel like there is some form of accountability that has to come onto the player's shoulders as well. Now, look, if you want to get mad at Petten for poor tackling technique, which there certainly was enough of that, if you want to get on him for, for poor pursuit angles and all that sort of stuff, cool, awesome. And honestly, if you don't like the scheme, like that is your right as well. I do just want to show you a little bit of this though, because I do think it's important for us to know. So let's take a look at um, a couple of back to back to back plays that were really just kind of backbreakers here right before the half, the two minute warning. You can see it's fourth and one and Minnesota is making no qualms about what they're going to do. They're going to run this football. You can see we've got a jumbo or a heavy set. You've got an extra offensive lineman in here up at the top playing left, left tackle. Um, you have two tight ends in, in the game. You're going to get feeling across. He is literally the only wide receiver on the field right now. So they're they're not sugarcoating it at all. They're going to run this football. And you can see Pettins do every, everything he can right now to stop the run. You can see all 11 defenders in the shot, which is rare to see. Unfortunately, the all 22 or the uh, end zone view is not up yet on NFL Game Pass. Um, otherwise, I'd be showing that. But this will also work. We've got a five-man front here. You've got four backers. I mean, really, you got nine in the box and then the others up here. So I mean, you're ready to stop the run. So let's take a look here and see what happens. You're going to put Thielen in motion just to verify essentially and try to drag some eyes. And then you're going to just essentially run inside zone left with a little lock on the backside. So these two linemen here are going to come out this uh, right tackle and the tight end are going to lock on the backside. They're going to keep this area right here open. It's called the bubble. And then everybody here is going to block left. OK, what needs to happen here if you're Green Bay is you have to get a heavy edge set right here. And then this defensive lineman right here has to not miss. He can't. He has to hold this gap to allow these backers to run free. OK, and you're going to see that happen kind of. I mean, for the most part, you'll see it work out. It just doesn't exactly work out the way that Green Bay wants it to. OK, so here you're going to see inside linebacker number. Let me catch that again. Fifty four here. I believe that's Kamal Martin. He gets the free run. He sees the window. He is unblocked at the point of attack right here and he just doesn't make the play. You also have your edge set. They've decided scheme wise that they're gonna let Thielen run free and the corner is gonna come up with a free run as well and he's gonna miss the play, okay? You've got two unblocked dudes at the point of attack and Delvin Cook still gets three yards on a fourth and one and they pick it up. So that's a tough play to come back from, okay? But okay, that is what it is. Maybe it's just downhill running. Maybe they're just playing tough, whatever. So the very next play here, First and 10 from the 20 with 156 left to go in the half. You can see the Vikings aren't sugarcoating it again. They are running this football. And you can see Pettin's playing the run. He's got his five front up here with his three down linemen and his two outside backers up on the line. He's got three backers in here. And then he's got that safety ready to drag down into, or excuse me, that stacked corner ready to drag down into the box as well. So a little bit of a motion adjustment here um, with the motion by uh, Irv Smith. And you're going to get a free run again from an unblocked inside backer, number 51 right here. Okay? It's everything Pettin's defense is designed to do. 
They're getting free runs into the backfield, and it's just not happening. Now, this may not be 100% on that inside backer because that edge got stretched, and you'll see it here when we go to the different angle. The edge itself gets stretched out, and that's not good. So let's take a look at this angle. What we have to do here for Preston Smith is hold this edge and start to collapse it inwards towards the center. That's going to make this running lane right here a lot smaller. OK, which will allow this backer to go hit that hole really easily. You're also going to see Dean Lowry right here just get blown off the ball. You cannot have this, even if you are getting double teamed. So you're going to see the left guard and the left tackle blow Dean Lowry off the ball. And you just can't have that. OK, in this scheme, Lowry's got to hold water here. You can see Preston Smith start to widen out on the run already. And then he's going to get chipped. Lowry's going to get blown off the ball. And that's not going to allow that inside backer right here to make the play. OK, now you're also going to watch Jackson right here get pushed pretty hard back. Um, a very good block. And, it, and Jackson's given up some some poundage. I get it to Irv Smith, but you got to shock and shed. You got to be able to get on a block and get off a block as quickly as possible. Okay. So um, also we see some pretty atrocious tackling on the end of this play. If we rewind this all the way back to the sideline view, it is not um, good tackling in the secondary. And that's something that Green Bay has struggled with not but all game long we're gonna or, uh all year long excuse me we're gonna see the initial point of contact right here on the shock and shed block for a gain of four and dalvin's gonna continue to rumble along and pick up a gain of nine okay so as we roll this through uh very next play second and one um again the vikings are gonna make no qualms about what they're doing they are here to run the football that's what these personnel sets say they're going to run the football you see dean lowry adjust based on motion and again you're going to get two inside backers here free runs okay now remember how this defense works you got to hold these offensive linemen allow the inside backers here to run now cook He's got to get his eyes on these inside backers, and he does. And instead of just going headfirst into unblocked backers, he's going to cut this thing back. Now, theoretically, Darnell Savage right here should be starting to squeeze that in. You can see we have the backside taken care of. Okay, we've got the edge set here very well. So Savage now has to just squeeze this in and play cutback. But what you'll see have happen here in just a moment is he kind of stops his feet and starts guessing a bit right here. Okay. There is nothing about this play that says stop your feet. Get up there, son. Make a play in the hole. You're going to get it done, okay, at the line of scrimmage. Instead, he slows his feet, allows Dalvin Cook a hole, and it's a gain of five. This is something that I continued to see throughout the day from Green Bay where it looks to me like the scheme was – pretty sound. You're getting unblocked dudes to the point of attack. They're just not making the play. And obviously you can feel free to call me an idiot and disagree and, and all this sort of stuff. That's fine. Like I'm, I'm totally cool with that. But at the end of the day, this is what I saw was happening. So thanks for taking a look at this. Again, my name is Coach Hawn on behalf of Packernet.com. If you have any questions or thoughts or concerns, or you really do think I'm an idiot, please feel free to let me know on any of the Packernet platforms. Until next time, we'll catch you later.